Hi, I'm Tim Gary with QT2 Systems, and we're going to go over a little bit of yoga and mindfulness today for pre-workout, post-workout, pre-race, post-race. Um, yoga sometimes uh, gets kind of a bad rap, but if uh, it, everybody can use it in different ways, uh, along with the mindfulness, especially when it comes to the hard training and race day uh, problems that may occur. Uh, the first thing that I like to do uh, is some sun salutations. Uh, what it does is it increases your blood flow, kind of boosts your energy, centers your mind, and it works on your strength and flexibility. So literally you do a forward fold, you do a halfway lift, touch your knees, flat back, forward fold, rise tall, and you're hugging your muscle to bone. Okay, and you would do as many of these as you need, forward fold, halfway lift, forward fold, rise tall, Okay, all these are great pre-race, pre-workout, uh, especially with races now, there's not a lot of getting into the water to do a warm-up swim right now. Uh, so these kind of get your energy going, kind of get your blood flowing, warms up your muscles. It's a great way to start in a very small space, um, especially if you're waiting in the corral to get ready to go swimming. Uh, some of the other parts that you would do is after you do a few and you kind of warm up, Halfway lift, make sure you have that flat back, you pause, take your time, there's a little flexibility there. It's kind of dynamic with a little bit of static mixed in. And then all that you would do is come out to a push up position. You go down and then up, letting your hips roll to the floor. And you can pause here for a little bit, uncurl your toes, let those hips open up a little bit, let your chest open up a little bit. And then you would go to down dog. And then sometimes you can slide right back to that push-up position, lower, up, down dog. And then if you step forward with let your right foot, you can get into a warrior one. Okay, this is great. It kind of opens up that back hip flexor, hip abductor. Okay, you go warrior two, reverse warrior, and you flow through. Your hands come down. You go high to low, up, and you can pause. Down dog, you can pause. Come forward with your other leg. And do warrior one, two, reverse on the other side. These are great because you can tell my heart's already beating a little harder, my breath's up, I can already feel myself warming up, and I'm doing this in my own personal space. So at home, if you're limited to space, or like I said, in transition area, or on the beach of a lake before the race, or even on a practice swim, just to try to warm up and get your body ready to go for the race or the exercise that you're going to do. The other part that I like when I do this is it helps kind of center me. Take a moment and to remember your whys for why you're training, the why for why you're racing. Um, and think of all the possible things that might possibly go wrong and think of things that you would do to relax yourself. Uh, I've been in all sorts of different races and there's always something that doesn't go as planned. Say you're in the swim and you get kicked and your goggles fall off. You know, don't panic. It's not the end of the day. Get your goggles back on, finish your swim. You may get into transition. You may go down the wrong aisle and panic that you're, you're gonna have a long transition time. Relax. The more you can center yourself, relax, stay in the moment and not get all caught up in if small little things go wrong here and there, is your heart rate will stay down, you'll stay relaxed, you'll stay focused on what's important, which is your pacing, your nutrition, your hydration, and ultimately that will help you have a better race. Some of the specific ones that I like to do for swimming, I like to do wheel. It really helps with the swimmers. So you get your hands by your head and up and you hold for a couple seconds and then back down. The reason why I like to do wheel um, is it kind of works in that swimmer's hunch, especially we all do all those freestyles. So we tend to round our shoulders forward. That wheel really opens up our chest, our lower back, and our hips from that swimming, but really just kind of helps with that swimmer's hunch. With biking, I really like the Chattarooga. So you go down to that high plank, you go low, and you go up, and you just kind of uncurl your toes, and you let those hips open up. You know, when we're in that bike position for so long, you know, we're hunched over, those hip flexors can get super tight. That's a great yoga pose. Open up those hip flexors, those abductors, and really just kind of sit there and relax a little bit. Um, that's one that I find to be very, very helpful. It's actually relaxing too, um, to do that. With the run, 
I like to get into the lunge position and I like to twist out of it a little bit. What it does is it opens up that back hip and it twists that spine and kind of elongates your body a little bit and it gets a little bit extra parts of your body. We all get into that lunge and some of us will drop that knee. I like to put a pillow under here and put my back foot up on a couch or a chair so I don't have to actually hold it and then I can stretch this arm up. The other excellent one that we like to do is the pigeon pose. Get that foot underneath you, put that leg back and you're just trying to bring your chest to the floor, walking your hands out. You really feel that all the way through your hip. And the other excellent one that I like to do is called lizard. So you're in that forward lunge position and you drop inside that front knee and you kind of let that knee roll open. You're going to feel it in your front hip and in that back hip as well. With all of these, just remember that you have to do both sides. I just showed you one. I'm trying to keep the video short. You're trying to hold some of these stretches 15 to 30 seconds and go through them as many times as you feel you need. It's a combination of dynamic warm up with some static stretching kind of mixed in to each of them. Uh, like I said with yoga, it's also the mindfulness part. I would highly recommend you YouTubing some videos on mindfulness to allow yourself to center your thoughts, keep positive thoughts within yourself so that on race day or during a training, if anything goes wrong, you're able to relax, stay focused on the task, not let the panic set in, and you're able to keep your heart rate down. So when you get through that moment, you're still going to have a great day. You're still going to perform well. All right. Thank you very much and have a great day.